Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff and wow, it's already May. And for some of you guys, that's a bad thing, but for those who are looking forward to WWDC 2020, we are definitely getting hyped for that event that typically comes in June. Now, if you're stoked for WWDC, I was 14 and all that's in store for this summer, definitely get subscribed to stay up to date on more news on that. And also check out channel memberships for exclusive wallpapers, giveaways, and other perks as well. Okay guys, so back to WWDC and sadly enough, it would just be about a month away where we typically see Apple's WWDC event in the San Francisco area. Last year, we saw WWDC 2019 held June 3 to 7, and that was a super awesome event with a lot of development being announced by Apple. Obviously, with everything going on in the world right now, that is not possible specifically this year, and Apple already told us quite some time ago that WWDC 2020 would be presented in a fully online experience. Now, just today, Apple has updated us on the fact that WWDC 2020 will be held on June 22nd. So let's get into what you should be expecting from WWDC 2020. Are you getting this really annoying spinning ball of death on your Apple computer? Yes, we have all been there, but I've actually been using a program called Clean My Mac X, and ever since I started using that program, I've never seen that ugly rainbow cursor again. Clean My Mac X allows you to clean up space on your hard drive protect your Mac from malware, and speed up your device to work as it did on day one of purchase. There's also a ton of other features as well, so go check out the link down below for more info. Okay, so first off, WWDC is typically much larger than the live stream keynote that typically takes place on day one of the conference. In fact, this entire conference typically lasts just about a week, and there's a ton of demonstrations, meetings, keynotes, and several other events in between. It's also a time where Apple really gets involved in the educational community, heavily promoting kids and young adults to start coding using their app development tools like Xcode. Now, a lot of these meetings can be held via video conference, and the events that they typically have, like keynotes, can at the very least be pre-recorded and then shown to individuals online when WWDC comes around. But Apple is always a little bit more on the personal side when it comes to their communication, so I do expect quite a few live streams, Q&As, and several different interactive classes that will include kids and in educational programs. Also, during this time of the online experience, we do expect to see new development versions of iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, watchOS, and macOS. In the past, on day one of WWDC, we typically see a beta of all of these operating system platforms, and developers can get them installed onto their devices to start testing out their app builds. After a few beta versions, we will then see public beta versions come out, which allow public beta testers to really test out the operating system experience and flag any potential bugs that might be a part of uh, that development process. Now, with everything being online this year, I don't think that iOS and other OS beta testing experiences will be any different in 2020. Even though new versions of Apple's operating systems were announced at WWDC, the testing and development always extends past that event and on into the summer. What I do believe will change is the timing of releases and also possible delays in the overall development of everything Apple had planned for this year on the software side of things. So what's the reasoning for that? Apple, as you know, is extremely private and having people take big projects like this home, like iOS development and all that, is not something that they've really done in the past. Typically everything is made in-house and doing it that way prevents informational leaks, security breaches, and ensures that things are kept extremely private. Now, typically leading up to WWDC, we don't hear much from Apple as everything is held very close to the vest, but because of the chaos going on in the world right now, we actually know quite a bit about the upcoming iOS 14 release. There has not only been quite a few leaks from manufacturers of Apple's products, but also leaks coming directly from Apple's own employees regarding iOS 14. We've seen some things like screen widgets, new wallpaper UI, and even a completely redesigned app switcher. We've also heard of apps like Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, and Xcode coming to iPadOS so that creative users can use that device instead of relying on something like a MacBook Pro. Honestly, in my opinion, if all of that is true, I think we are set for a very interesting summer of app development and also beta testing because all of those things sound really awesome and I'd really love to see at least Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad 
at least in the fall time. That would be really, really cool. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is Mac products specifically. Because everyone is working from home and in need of a computer, we might see a presentation highlighting the development of Mac products. Just this week, we saw a new 13 inch MacBook Pro that was honestly a little bit disappointing of a release, but we haven't seen anything on the iMac front in 2020 so far. So we may see that in the next month or so. Typically, Apple doesn't really focus on the hardware side of things when it comes to WWDC, but with the way the world is going right now, I wouldn't put it past Apple to at least start laying breadcrumbs for what they have coming at the end of the year in regards to the Mac. They already released a few products during the current pandemic, but if you look at the specific products they released, they were all meant from work from home use or for people on a budget. So to carry on that theme, Apple may at WWDC 2020 present even more products that will be marketed as work from home devices. On the flip side, Apple may postpone or put a hold to the development of software and hardware for previously planned devices because there isn't a current market for them. So that's also something to keep in mind. Regardless though of what's announced or not announced, we are still going to see Apple's best in their attempt at an online experience of WWDC. Just the fact that they delayed it until the end of the month of June is very telling that they are working very hard to be as creative as possible with WWDC 2020. And hopefully that brings out a really good experience because we at least need one of those this year. So guys, that's a bit of news on WWDC and what to expect from this new online experience that Apple will be presenting, hopefully in late June. If you have any questions about today's video, make sure to leave those in the comment section and also in the comment section, let me know what you want to see the most come out of WWDC 2020. I'd love to get that conversation started and I look forward to seeing what you guys have in mind. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining us in today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, get subscribed, and also hit that bell button to get updates on when any future content is released. Also, make sure to check out channel memberships as those are now live and perks for being a member will be extremely relevant once WWDC finally rolls around. So with all of that being said, I hope to see you in some upcoming content, but until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.